This podcast is sponsored by Murgatroyd, intellectual property attorneys. For more information on today's guest and our company, visit murgatroyd.com forward slash podcasts. Welcome to the fourth season of Murgatroyd's Innovation Talks podcast. We're delighted you've joined us. If you have any questions, you can email us at innovation.talks at murgatroyd.com or via at murgatroyd on Twitter. And please remember to subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. So let's go straight into today's podcast. Hello, I'm David Manson and I'm a trainee patent attorney at Murgatroyd. I work in Murgatroyd's Newcastle office and I'm delighted to be with Keith Jones today. Hi Keith. Hi Dave, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. So Keith, you're a UK and European patent attorney with many years of experience in the IP industry. I'm sure you'll agree that we are often asked the same questions about IP and a recurring question I'm often asked when I present IP awareness sessions is, why should I seek IP protection when I don't have the money to defend my right? Yeah, we do get asked that question quite a lot. People often see that the cost of obtaining IP protection and defending it can be significant and they're concerned that they're not getting any benefit as a result. I think you need to explain to people that there is initially some deterrent value in having a patent application. So once you've applied for a patent, you're entitled to say whatever product or process is covered by that patent application that is subject to patent pending, which can have a deterrent effect to competitors. So when they see that, it can put them off. There is a benefit in that patent applications are not published for 18 months. So although somebody may know that a client of ours has a patent pending, they won't necessarily know what's in the patent or what it covers. So there's a certain risk they take if they seek to copy the the product or the process. And then later on in the process, we know that even after the application's published, so before the patent's granted, if we look at how we help people on the other side of the fence, we often get asked to look at our clients' competitors' patent applications, say. Um, we often advise them not to do what's covered by the patent application because doing so would risk infringement. The owner of the patent application never finds out about that, so there's a hidden benefit to patent applications as well. Interesting. Thanks, Keith. So in terms of defending IP rights, is that always necessarily costly? It can be expensive if you're forced to go to court, but obviously that's, that's the action of last resort. That's the final thing you want to be doing. IP litigation can be eye-wateringly expensive and not something you want to embark on unless it's absolutely necessary. But before you get to that stage, typically there'll be an exchange of of letters between uh, somebody who owns a patent and somebody who's thought to be infringing. And it may be that there's an opportunity for settlement or to come to some sort of deal and avoid having to go to court. As I say, it's always the last resort. And it may be that you can seek an agreement before you actually end up getting to court. And of course having a granted patent, and as part of the negotiations to avoid having to get to court, it may be that you agree a licence with a potential infringer. But it may be that in having a patent, somebody might approach you for a licence in any case rather than infringe your patent. So they may themselves want to avoid having to go to court, but to do what it is that your patent covers. And so they may approach you and take a licence. On the other hand, your patent's a piece of property, and somebody may approach you and may want to buy that patent off you. So again, there can be value gained by selling that patent as a piece of property. It doesn't necessarily have to end up in a big, bitter battle in court, which is going to cost hundreds of thousands of pounds. Thanks, Keith. So um, what would you say is the proportion of patents or disputes that, that reach a litigation stage? I don't know the figures off the top of my head, but I would say that in the UK, for instance, it's a very small number. I think if you look at how many patent litigation cases are being prosecuted through the courts at any one time, it's not a huge number. It's uh, at most tens of cases. And compared to the 30,000 or whatever patent applications that are made every year in the UK or through the European Patent Office and cover the UK, it's a very small proportion. So given the costs involved, I guess that that's helped by both parties. It's in both parties' interest to reach a conclusion without going down the litigation route. Yeah, I think the expense that might be involved certainly focuses people's minds in trying to come to an agreement. And the courts themselves take a very dim view of anybody that comes before them who hasn't made an earnest effort to, to try and settle any dispute they may have without resorting to legal proceedings. So then, generally speaking, what would your advice be to SMEs who are about to embark on the patent process? I would say 
to them, don't lose sight of particularly the hidden values in having a patent application. Even in circumstances where they may have an invention which is of questionable merit when it comes to patentability, there can still be significant advantages in simply having a pending patent application. So my advice to SMEs would be to not lose sight of the many hidden benefits there are in having a patent application and a patent. It doesn't necessarily always have to end in court proceedings and there can be many advantages before you get to that point. Of course, it's attractive investment opportunities as well. Of course. I mean, that's another plus point. Often investors like to see that you have at least considered patenting or some sort of protection for your invention. They like to know that if they're making an investment that you've taken those steps to protect what it is they're investing in. So it can often be advantageous when investors are looking at you. So can we just pick up on the licensing point again? Do you want to tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, so a patent provides the owner of it with a right, and that's the right to stop others from doing what that patent covers. So that's the basic principle of patenting. So it gives you control over a particular process or a particular product or a particular area of technology. It may be a broad area, it may be a very narrow area. If somebody else comes along and they like the look of what you do and they want to exploit that same area, they may approach you then for a license, which means effectively they're looking for you to okay them to do whatever it is that your patent covers. In exchange for that, typically you can expect remuneration. Uh, so that may involve some sort of upfront payment, which may cover, for instance, the money you expended in getting the patent in the first place and getting the protection in place. And it could also then involve some sort of ongoing royalty. So if it was a product, it may be a percentage of the sales price of each of the products or something like that. So it's an additional way of making revenue out of having got the patent in place. So for instance, there may be a market that you're trying to fulfill where supply is such that you can't fulfill that on your own. So if you bring in another manufacturer who can top up that, that market need, then you're also gaining from their entry into the market. Fascinating. Thanks, Keith. Thank you for your time. No problem. Good to speak to you, Dave. Thanks for your time today. We hope you found today's podcast valuable and remember to subscribe so you don't miss any of our future episodes. So until the next time, goodbye. Our business is founded on trust and collaboration. The subjects we choose for our podcasts are topical and informative. We are always looking for suggestions for new topics for discussion, so if there's an area of IP that you're keen to understand better, please drop us a line at innovation.talks at